Aloha. Thanks for your consideration of the views expressed in this think tech commentary. Biden needs an enemy, is the title of an article in The Atlantic by Molly Jong Fast. She quotes commentator Heather Cox Richardson, who said, Biden could easily declare war on the authoritarians threatening our democracy, much the same as Abraham Lincoln did when he pulled northerners together to stand against the slaveholders. Yes, Biden should change the narrative and speak out against the mind-blowing maneuvers of the Trump GOP that are destroying our democracy. He should remind us that he's trying to rescue us and ask us to help him do that. We voted for him when he said that in the 2020 campaign, and he could do it again. In fact, he has done a lot of very good things since his inauguration, but he doesn't sufficiently toot his horn to remind us that he is a far better president than Trump or any of Trump's acolytes could ever be. Molly Jong Fast appeared on The Last Word with Lawrence O'Donnell and Jonathan Alter of The Daily Beast, and they agreed. Even considering Biden's hard work and clarity, somehow more than 51% of Americans disapprove of him. What can he do? Well, he can call the Trumpers out, disagree with their lies outrageous statements and actions, and criticize, ridicule and make fun of them, not unlike the Lincoln Project, and he should get on with that now. Every good story needs a villain. It's easy to find villains in what the Trump Republicans are doing, but Biden doesn't want to go there, ostensibly because he doesn't want to lower himself. But if he wants to win or have Democrats win in the midterm, he needs to move on from being the Mr. Rogers nice guy and get at least a little tougher. Not doing that could be a big mistake, losing is a bad option. Many people, even Democrats, have forgotten Biden's rationality, fairness, decency, honesty, empathy and achievement. They'd rather have amnesia and be seduced by what Trump does to provoke and distract them, even if it undermines their own health and well-being, and the health and well-being of their community and the country. Trump's lies, his criminal conduct, his racism and hate, and his ability to get away with it, seem more interesting to them. Even after a disastrous and completely corrupt presidency, Trump has increased his base. For them, his double-down pathology is an attraction, a sign of strength. He fascinates them by insulting, deriding, threatening and compromising everyone around him. History will judge us by Trump's continuing popularity, and it is already clear that the world pities us for that. Trump is still giving us a reality show, like The Apprentice, based on tail-wagging drama and schadenfreude. It's a no-holds-barred competition, and right now Biden is not winning. Trump's anti-hero model is an American phenomenon, like Bonnie and Clyde or John Dillinger, famed criminals seen as popular heroes. But this cannot be sustainable. Like Huey Long, it gets tiring. You cannot fool all of the people all of the time. Surely, Trump and his acolytes are the perfect villains for Biden Democrats to call out. Public opinion, politics and elections have become a matter of PR and social psychology. So where is Ron Klain? and Biden's other close advisers. When will they see this opportunity and prevail on Biden to become proactive about it? It's almost 2022 and there's no time to waste. Marjorie Taylor Greene is a good villain to consider, along with so many other Trump acolytes who lie, support the insurrection, deny the process of the insurrection committee and oppose so many bills that are clearly in the national interest. Biden leaves it to the imperfect reporting of the press, and that's not enough. We need to hear from him personally. He cannot stand by, while the acolytes are undoing our country. Mr. Nice Guy won't work. The Marquess of Queensbury won't win. Biden has to be out front in this high-stakes tipping point transformation. As admirable a figure as Mr. Rogers was, Biden has to be stronger than that. He has to be fair, and he also has to be firm. He has to be a president who we see as our national hero and who joins issue and fights for us. He can be nothing less. To Joe Biden then, the cost of liberty is eternal vigilance. But it is also the daily demonstration of public heroism and unambiguous leadership for the people of our country. Thanks for your consideration of the views expressed in this commentary. Mahalo for watching.